The question, what is artificial intelligence, is just a phenomenally difficult one. Nobody owns artificial intelligence. It's a very broad church. Lots of people have very different ideas about what it is and what it should be. For some people, artificial intelligence is the Hollywood dream. What they're after is the idea of building machines which are as fully capable or perhaps even better, uh, more capable than, than human beings. Machines that could do everything that a human being could do. Uh, and that's sometimes called general artificial intelligence. Um, for other people, and I'm more in that other camp, Artificial intelligence is about building tools, building uh, uh, computers that can do very specific tasks better than human beings can. So, for example, uh, machines that can uh, d diagnose abnormalities on a heart scan or spot tumours on an x-ray, those kinds of things. Hey, Mom, how you doing? It's really good to see you. Um, thanks for doing this. Um, so, maybe to start, could you... Uh, Introduce yourself. My name is Joy Fox. I'm very fortunate to live on beautiful Vancouver Island on the west coast of British Columbia, Canada. And um, it's a really beautiful spot that I've been here nearly 10 years now and grew up in England. Um, I was actually born in Scotland and grew up in England during the war. So um, this, is a, this is a very different time of life when we, you know, when we depend on so much on technology and we had nothing then. We just talked to each other, you know, person to person. It was, it was a real person thing. Wow. So maybe it would be good to understand, you know, like, where have you come across AI? Well, you've told me what AI is and I, and I understand that. Um, you know that those those videos that April did where I was flying over the clouds. Did you see that? Is, was that AI, AI generated? It was, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought that was really cool. You see, I think there's cool aspects of it. I don't know about the business aspects, but I would like to know how it can help me and, um, you know, how I could incorporate it into my um, probably really boring lifestyle, but. Um, I'm sure there are ways that it, it can help me. I did like having all of the instructions laid out for me, you know, whether, whether I'm totally in my right lane and having, you know, the, the speed of the road as well as my speed right in front of me on a camera. That, those, those are good things. When I was growing up, there was, there was no phone, no TV. We had a phone in the village, a phone box. So if we wanted to make a phone call, that's where we went. The only people that had phones were the post office and, the, and you know, the police house. So, you know, that was, that was a real big difference. So um, it, was, it was all face to face. And, you know, there was, there was no technology for it. And when I read your little historical thing that you sent me, I was very surprised that things were happening in the 50s as far as AI was concerned. And I, you know, that, that really took me by surprise. I had no idea that it went back that far. I thought it was a brand new innovation, you know, in the last couple of years or so. But Why did you believe that modeling it off the brain was a more effective approach? It wasn't just me believed it. Early on, von Neumann believed it and Turing believed it. And if either of those had lived, I think AI would have had a very different history. But they both died young. You think AI would have been here sooner? I think neural net, the neural net approach would have been accepted much sooner if either of them had lived. Like, what would you say your expectations for AI are as you think about kind of where it's going and your experiences with it? Like, what are your expectations? There's an expectation that we really should know what's going on and be prepared to embrace it. But for my generation, it, it's a little dif bit difficult to figure out how to do it all and how to embrace it because we're used to talking to people and now we're talking to machines. Hundreds of billions of dollars are being invested every year on developing this technology and this is growing. And these companies have a stated goal of building machines that will be smarter than us, that can replace human labor. Yet, we still don't know how to make sure they won't turn against us. Do you feel like you're 
embracing AI? I mean, it sounds like you've had some experience with it and you're seeing it, but do you feel like you're embracing it? And maybe if so, how? I haven't embraced it as much as I could, but I have tried chat GBT and got a really, really good answer to a question I asked. So I'm you know, very interested to hear what you've got to say about it and you can educate me on what it's all about and where it's going and what it's doing. You know, the way I typically write prompts is I first start with who who is the content, like who's the person, who's the actor, and mm -hmm. then I lay out the task, and then I lay out what I need. And then mm -hmm. at structure, you know, you'll find that it gives you a really good response. And so you could say, you are a travel agent, and mm -hmm. um, I am traveling to France and staying in Paris mm -hmm. for two weeks. My budget is blast. You know, I want to do these things. I have a budget of, you know, $10,000, create a, uh, an itinerary for me from start to finish. So I'm curious, I have to ask, like, mom, what makes you nervous about this technology, about AI? As I said before, we're just used to dealing face to face with people. And um, now we've got self checkouts everywhere is, I suppose that that is run by AI. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to embrace that. But on the other hand, I don't want people to lose their jobs because I'm using a machine. And so when you start getting that massive amount of disruption in employment, what do you do? The whole nature of employment is going to change. There aren't manufacturing jobs coming back. What jobs are going to be made redundant in a world where I am sat here as a CEO yeah. with a thousand AI agents? Right. I was thinking of all the names of, my, of the people in my company. Yeah. Who are currently doing those jobs. I was thinking about my CFO when you talked about processing business data, yeah. my graphic designers, my video editors, etc. So what what jobs are going to be impacted? Yeah, all of those. When did you first encounter AI? Um, have come into technology really in my work life and now in my home life. I still use it and try and keep up with it, which is uh, a little a little bit difficult and because I don't understand a lot of what's going on and there doesn't seem to be anybody there to say, uh, oh, here's Paige, why don't you read this? Because we're so used to reading instructions. You know, this is what you do first and second. But now um, there's an expectation that we really should know what's going on and be prepared to embrace it. But there, are, there is a couple of things that, that I wanted to bring up when um, the AI has been wrong and it, and it concerns the world of um, botany because I, I ask a lot of questions about flowers and um, I have a flower called a gentian and I wanted to know more about it and I, I put it on Facebook and and I didn't, I didn't look at it but I got an answer saying what the hell are you talking about it had it had taken the word gentian and put um, genitals because that was in their database. Wait, what? How intelligent is artificial intelligence? What a great question. It's very intelligent, but can it think like humans? I don't think so yet. I don't believe AI has a point of view. I heard an interesting story on a podcast where there were five different AI companies and as AI got better and better, um, these guys were the experts of AI talking that all five systems, if they had the same data input of, you know, everything on Google, let's say, which is what they're all using, um, eventually as they get more perfected, if you ask the same question to the five systems, they'll get, you'll get the same answer, one answer. And if you were to have a great script for a movie and you gave it to five great directors, you would get five very different movies. Mm -hmm. I personally think it should never replace the truth because these days, you know, we're bombarded with fake news and you don't know which is right and which is wrong. But I guess the people who feed the fake news to AI want it to be fake news, but um, that really doesn't help us. Um, at all, because we, d we just don't know what to believe. 
And you know, there's a lot of history now that's being rewritten, which I have a real concern with, you know, history it happened, it happened. I don't think that AI can ever replace the human connection. I mean, it can't give hugs and kisses, can it? What advice would you give to the next generation? I would say, by all means, learn all you can about what technology has to offer and use it for good, not evil. And also, um, don't, don't neglect everything else in life because the human connection will never go away. I mean, that's what keeps us going. I think you've got so much to learn from other people. You know, we're not always right about everything we think. Our opinions are not always right. It's good to have discussions with people one-on-one. -on -one. You know, just, just don't be one of the silent crowd that, that says nothing.